Thank you, Chairman Stewart and Ranking Member Bonamici, and also to our witnesses today. Um, I appreciate that uh, EPA is continuing its investigations of hydraulic fracturing. I think that the EPA's investigations are really critical to the federal government's responsibility to ensure that drinking water and groundwater across the United States remain safe. And I do understand the industry's concerns about the investigations and the regulations that accompany efforts to ensure that fracking is conducted safely, but I think it's paramount that these activities be conducted in a manner that does as little risk as possible, understanding, as our witnesses have said, um, that it's important for us to manage risk. But there's no reason for us to, um, to jeopardize the public safety and the safety of our groundwater and drinking water um, if we can help it. And so that is the spirit in which I look at the efforts of the, of the EPA. And, and I don't think it's a negative uh, point that the study in western Pennsylvania found that fracking chemicals didn't uh, pollute the water. That's the job of the DOE in, in that instance and the EPA to ensure that constituent concerns, community concerns, consumer concerns are addressed using the best possible science. Uh, Dr. Rahm mentioned in his prepared statement um, that that study is not conclusive and shouldn't be used to make inferences about fracking broadly, and I take that into consideration when I read all the um, testimony. I don't think it's highly unusual um, that EPA has a plan over a period of time, which may seem lengthy uh, to us, to develop the study, conduct the investigations, peer review the investigations and publish those studies. I think it's important for us to try to get this as right as possible. Um, as the former ranking member of the Subcommittee on Investigations and Oversight, I know I can recall receiving testimony on the lack of disclosure on the chemical mixtures used in fracking and making sure that the industry um, is transparent. I think some states have tried to move in, um, in that direction, but I would note that in my state of Maryland, where um, these activities might be pursued in the western part of our state, that there's been great resistance and I think even threats um, from some in industry that if our state um, um, regulates the industry more strictly than it wants, then it's going to pull out its economic activity. And I just don't think that's the way uh, quite to do this. I would like to see a greater balance in what it is, at the, the federal role, um, but ensuring that our states have the capacity to monitor the economic activities um, in the state. Uh, I just have uh, really one question for, uh, for Dr. Rahm, um, because I understand um, that, as you've indicated, the individual investigations and studies that were conducted by EPA and other agencies can't conclude whether fracking is safe or potentially c contaminate groundwater, and that this is in part due to geological differences among other reasons, and I wonder if that is even true within a state and within uh, among various um, sites, because I think it's important uh, to know that. And in your written testimony, you state that regional differences matter and local character has an impact on management strategies, and I wonder if you could discuss the current regional collaboration and benefits of the kind of partnership to inform and establish best practices for identifying poten potentially harmful impacts of fracking while allowing states to unify their oversight. So I'm not quite sure what, what your question is. Sorry. The, the question is simply whether uh, current regional collaborations and the benefits of, of those partnerships inform establishing best practices for identifying potentially harmful impacts on fracking while also allowing states to unify um, their oversight um, collectively, and that might be, you know, regionally. So, for example, in Western Maryland, is important to, is it important to unify um, those activities with what's going on in West Virginia, um, which is, you know, which is a, our neighboring state? Sure. Um, so, I, I guess what that makes me think is that, you know, just to reiterate the idea that it's important to involve, I think, all stakeholders when it comes to the data and information that we're collecting. Um, just to maybe point, uh, point out that industry and state agencies have, have a great amount of data and expertise that, that, we, that we should be using, that they are using when it comes to uh, 
looking at risks and impacts and, and assessing those. Um, I, I don't know of, of many examples, just personally, of, of, a, of a regional sort of effort to try and put that, that data together, which I think is one of the things that we're really missing. Um, there are a few instances, again, the Susquehanna River Basin Commission, which really only has authority over water withdrawal, just that one particular activity. Um, and they do pull in, they do talk to industry and, and state agencies, and I think you can see that when they have the right information from everybody, they can make, uh, they can make smart decisions. But a lot of times, uh, I, I don't think we have, at least as far as I know, a, a, many other regional bodies that, that undertake that kind of exercise where we're putting all the different pieces of information together, and I think that would be valuable. Thank you.